Rabies. The rabies virus is a member of the genus Lysa virus of the family Rhabdoviridae. Lysa from the Greek goddess of mad rage, and rhabdo meaning rod, referring to its cylindrical nucleocapsid that kinda looks like a rod but is really more of a bullet. It's an envelope virus with linear negative sense single-stranded RNA. It can infect mammals of all kinds, but the most important reservoir is the domestic dog. Wildlife can also be vectors of the virus. A few of the common ones include bats, raccoons, skunks, and foxes. Transmission and pathogenesis One can get the virus when virus-laden saliva enters a break in the skin, like through a bite. Other less common modes of transmission include organ transplant from a previously undiagnosed donor resulting in rabies infection in the recipient, or aerosol transmission, which can occur when there are lots of suspended air droplets containing the virus, such as in humid caves with a ton of bats, their oral secretions heavy in the air, or laboratories with subpar containment situations. But for the average person, you only have to worry about the bites. Once infected, the incubation period lasts, well, pretty variably. On average, it ranges between 20 to 90 days, but can be considerably shorter or longer. One case of a person in the United States had an incubation period of several years. When bitten, the saliva comes in contact with connective tissue and skeletal muscle cells. The virus will try to find its way to the closest peripheral nerve. Between the skeletal muscle cells and the nerves is a space known as the neuromuscular junction, where there are lots of receptors for communication between the nerve and the muscle. The receptor the virus binds to is still unclear, but the three candidates are nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, neural cell adhesion molecules, and low-affinity neurotrophin receptor P75NTR. The virus continues to spread from peripheral nerve to nerve, then to the spinal cord, and eventually to the brain. In the brain, it replicates a lot, resulting in acute behavioral changes. These behavioral changes vary widely, and are broadly classified under two forms, the furious and dumb form. This division is of little practical value though, because the signs vary a lot and often meld together. But for discussion purposes, here they are. Under furious form, there's uncharacteristic aggressiveness, hyperexcitability, snapping at inanimate objects, and self-mutilation. Under dumb form, there's seeking solitude, disinterest in food and play, and lethargy. Interestingly, histopathologic examination reveals variable inflammation and little to no neuronal injury. You can find nigri bodies in the cytoplasm of neurons, but everything else looks structurally sound, which is pretty paradoxical considering all the clinical signs and lethality of the disease. The virus still continues spreading, this time away from the brain, going from nerve to nerve spreading to the rest of the organs, the most important of which are the salivary glands. The saliva is most infectious during the time clinical signs show. However, most dogs and cats can shed the virus 4 to 5 days before showing clinical signs. So that's 4 to 5 days plus the time clinical signs show till death is when you can get infected. This is the basis for the 10-day monitoring of suspected rabies cases. In some places, it's 14 just to be safe. So anyway, eventually paralysis will slowly creep up. The animal will become ataxic, pharyngeal muscles will paralyze making them unable to drink water, then they may fall into a coma, and die from respiratory arrest. Diagnosis Because of the vastly different ways rabies can manifest, Clinical diagnosis is difficult, and this shouldn't be the basis for public health decisions. It can be easily confused with other neurologic disorders or normal aggressive behavior in a strange environment. Suspected rabies cases should be sent to approved laboratories designated by the state or local government for a definitive diagnosis. The suspect patient must unfortunately be euthanized and the head removed for submission to the laboratory. The specimen must be fresh, frozen, and unfixed. No chemical fixation should be done as this may affect testing. The REC fluorescent antibody test is the current test of choice. It works like this. There's this anti-rabies antibody. Attached to it is a fluorescent compound with a really long name. It's here to make the antibody glow. Here are two tissue sections. One with rabies antigen, that's the virus, 
and one without. The anti-rabies antibody would bind to the rabies antigen, and where there's no rabies antigen, they're washed off. They are then examined under a fluorescence microscope. A positive result would look like this, while a negative result would look like this. Look at all the green glowy things. RT-PCR can also be done to detect the presence of viral rabies RNA. But that's a little bit more expensive. Treatment. Once signs and symptoms show, there's nothing you can do to treat rabies. We can only try to prevent it. Fortunately, the rabies vaccine exists. Dogs and cats are vaccinated against rabies at 12 to 16 weeks old. Then revaccinated annually or every three years depending on the local guidelines. This protects them from contracting rabies from rabid animals. In people, vaccination, plus all the other things you do to prevent, can be divided into two categories. Pre-exposure prophylaxis and post-exposure prophylaxis. Pre meaning before, post meaning after, exposure meaning point of contact with the virus, and prophylaxis meaning steps taken to prevent the disease. Pre-exposure prophylaxis is recommended for people at high risk of exposure to rabies. These include people who interact with animals a lot, like veterinarians, zookeepers, wildlife biologists, spelunkers, or cave explorers because of the risk of exposure to bats, and people who work with live rabies virus in labs. Oh, and also people traveling to countries where rabies is endemic. Two doses of the vaccine are administered one week apart from each other for the pre-exposure prophylaxis. Post-exposure prophylaxis is given after being bitten. Four doses of the vaccine are given on day 0, 3, 7, and 14. Day 0 being the day of the bite, or as soon as you see your physician. Human rabies immunoglobulin is also given on day 0. These are antibodies that neutralize the rabies virus while your immune system is still processing what they learn from the vaccine. Eventually, your body will be able to create its own antibodies to neutralize the virus as you finish your vaccination. If you have been previously vaccinated against rabies, then exposed, your post-exposure prophylaxis would no longer include the human rabies immunoglobulin, and only the vaccine is to be given on days 0 and 3. In all cases post-exposure, cleaning the wound with soap and water is imperative. The rabies virus, similar to the coronavirus, is enveloped, and this envelope can be destroyed upon sufficient contact with soap. Treating the wound with povidone iodine is also recommended. Recommendations may be different for people who are immunocompromised, hypersensitive, or develop an adverse reaction to the vaccine. If your attending physician's recommendations are different from these guidelines, it's best to follow their advice. If your pet dog or cat was exposed to rabies, like they were bitten, it's recommended that they be revaccinated immediately and observe for any symptoms developing for 45 days. Saying revaccinated here implies that they've been vaccinated before. If your pet has never been vaccinated, then they unfortunately have to be euthanized. So, vaccinate your pets. Other methods of prevention include pretty much methods that keep you or your pets from being bitten. Like training them to behave on leash while you're out, neutering or spaying your pets to help keep unwanted dogs or cats, you can walk cats, from approaching them, and avoiding contact with wildlife, especially those that seem ill. Bats in particular. If a should-be nocturnal bat is flying around during the day or paralyzed on the ground, do not engage. You often don't feel bat bites, so you may not even know you've been bitten. And that's pretty much it on rabies. Anyway, September 28th is World Rabies Day, a day where we raise awareness on this deadly but completely preventable disease. And this video is my little contribution to that, if I finish this on time. Hope you enjoyed it! Thank you for watching!